Stephen, the third son of President Gerald Ford. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Every uh, boy's dream to grow up to be like his father, huh? Are you stuck? Is there a time in your life you've been stuck with your family, your career, your friends, things that seem to be passing you by? Because that happens to me. And I wonder sometimes, do I have a big enough vision for change to allow change to happen in my life? Welcome, I'm Steve Ford. Some of you probably recognize me from when my father was president of the United States and took over the reins of this country at a very tough time in American history. Others of you probably remember me from some of the hundreds of TV shows and over 30 films I've worked on in Hollywood as an actor over the last 20 years, such as these. We are going in with the first wave. These more bucks for us to kill. You smash the entire area. You kill anything that has more than two legs. You get me? We get you, sir. Daddy, don't go. Uh, nothing would give me more pride than to represent my country. But what can I say to this? Daddy, Daddy! My little girl. We've handled these types of situations before. You still haven't answered my question. We told you there'd be risks. He set up a casualty collection point. I, I don't think they're going to be able to move. Sergeant Sanderson and a small Delta team are moving from Steele's position to the crash site as we speak. Joe, I thought it was you. I thought it was you, Harry Burns. Harry, Harry, how you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm fine, I'm doing fine. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I was just walking by and I thought it was you, and there it is, it's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harry, this is Sally Albright, Harry Burns. Uh, Harry and I, we used to, uh, we lived in the same building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but today I come to you as a keynote speaker. My unique talk is from the perspective of growing up in America's most famous home. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the White House. It's, it's the lessons I've learned in life, the inspiring stories of, of family and country and overcoming adversity. It's, it's the insider's look at the White House, the funny little stories, the anecdotes, the stories you never heard before. And you actually get to see the real photos and slides of the events as I tell the story. My talk is going to make you laugh. It's going to make you cry. It's going gonna, it's gonna to motivate you. It's going to make you rethink your life, to have a vision for your family and yourself. Most of all, you're going to walk away feeling good about yourself, your family's potential in this great country. Let's take a look. Thank you very much. That's a warm welcome. And welcomes are important. Uh, this last couple of years, I've taken some time off from my acting career to do some other things. I've been working with some overseas relief organizations, been to Africa a couple times, and Mexico. I've also been speaking to a lot of high school kids on alcoholism. Traveled around this last, uh, last year and spoken to close to 80,000 high school kids. Next slide, I think every man in this room has had this look. Am I right? Does this tell you who really ran the White House? Right? Our family was just like yours. Okay, we just had better government housing. That's it. This is one thing Dad never got credit for, though, when he was president. This slide that you're seeing right now, this is with Brezhnev. Dad got credit for the Helsinki Accord and working with the Chinese and things like that. But no one ever knew that he brought the high five to this country. He got this. He got this from Brezhnev. But I challenge you to, to approach your family life with as much zeal and vigor as you approach your professional life. And that's what I challenge us all today. What sort of examples, what sorts of character are we leaving for our children? What sort of stories are you leaving for your community, your family, so they know who you are? Character is something, when I think of character, I think of character is what you do when no one's looking. Michigan was playing Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech was an all-white school. Georgia Tech found out Michigan had one black player on the team, and they said they would not come to Michigan and play the game. Dad was 20 years old made a decision to quit the team, wrote his father a letter, explained it, said it was unjust, it shouldn't happen. Willis Ward came to Dad 
and a couple other members of the team who also quit. And he said, I, I want you guys to suit up for the game. I want you to go out there and beat Georgia Tech. Now, that year, 1934, Michigan only won one game. They came off two undefeated seasons, national champions. The only game they won in 1934 was against Georgia Tech. They beat them 9-2. to two. Thank God I had a mother. And, and God had mercy and grace on me. And he provided me with a family and a mother that had showed me that it showed me how to get over adversity. My dad gave me a book. My two brothers and I and my sister, he gave us a book about 10 years ago, and he put in there some handwritings of his convictions about his own life. And this book is like, this book is like a Bible to me. It's my second Bible, but it is a Bible because it's for my father. And I look at what he, the instructions he gives me on a successful marriage. Um, he talks about there must be a belief on the part of both people that there is nothing of higher priority than the sanctity and constitution of that relationship. A son needs to hear that. I challenge each of you to go home, take a yellow pad out, write these things to your own children, because we as children are proud to have them. We want to know where you stand. We want, you to, we want to see your integrity. We want to see your character. And that, Dad, is what I thank you for today. I thank this man. I, I thank this man for loving me, for taking care of me, and leading our family. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for your time. I look forward to working with you personally to customize a speech for your group. Hope to hear from you soon.